what's going on everybody thanks for dropping back by today i'm gonna answer your questions about the canon eos r6 well not y'all's questions because i didn't put up a poll but i reached out to a few youtubers and asked them if they had any questions about the eos r6 and they gladly or kindly sent me over some footage with a few of their questions and these are those questions what's up guys my name is so ricardo and Let's just go ahead and dive into these questions. Before I do go further, I was asked by a fellow creator just to go ahead and ask some questions that I had about the Canon R6. Now, it was recently released by Canon and it was one of the most anticipated releases of 2020. So let's just go ahead and jump into some of these questions that I have and hopefully I can help other creators or people that are thinking about purchasing this camera in the future so question number one and this is probably the most anticipated question that everyone is going to be asking does the camera overheat so before i continue i am filming on the eos r6 right now so i can't put it in my hand and show it to you but my shutter speed is 1 over 50 my aperture is at 2.8 and my iso is at 400 I am using the 15 to 35 millimeter RF lens, but I have it set to 24 millimeters right now. That, that is at 15 millimeters. So you see what kind of an angle I get at 15. And I'm literally standing half a foot away from the, the lens, but I wanna get a little bit more, but we're gonna stick to 24 millimeters right now because I'm not, it's not about showing my surroundings. It's about me discussing with you sitting in front of the camera here. All right, so I haven't noticed this camera overheat not once. Never had an indication that it was overheating. Uh, I've been waiting for it to overheat actually so I can kind of have an, a range of how long I have to be able to use it. Now the max amount of recording this does is 4K60. I rarely record in 4K60, but I do record in 120 frames per second in 1080p. Now, I've never seen an indicator Tell me that was overheating at any point in time in any of those modes and i also did a live stream with the 4k setting through zoom for an hour and 15 minutes now granted the battery was halfway when i started this live stream it lasted an hour and 15 minutes on the rest of the battery power so other than that it didn't overheat the indicator did say oh running out of power shutting down and it closed out and i had to use my I had to use my webcam camera to finish the, the live Zoom meeting. All right, man. So the first question I have for you is, how good is the stabilization on the R6? Obviously, you know, I assume it's pretty good, but is there any difference between the cameras? You know, does it seem like it's more smooth when you're walking on gravel or maybe you jogging a little bit, maybe a little run? You know, just how, how different is the stabilization or is it pretty much the same? Can you tell? Hmm. Stabilization? Let's see. Heavy V8s. Here we go. Tony Bocci's, what do you got? Going against Ryan Literal. Yep. Yep. It's got some good stabilization. It's noticeable. I use a 600 millimeter on the front of this camera and I got some pretty good shots of uh, some cars handheld. It's pretty stable. Question number two. Now, uh, this is um, a different type of question. Now, do you consider the R6 a photography camera or a videography camera? So for me, 20 megapixel sensor, it's a lot like the 1DX Mark II. Um, it is lacking in the sense in comparison to 1DX Mark II, it almost seems more like the Canon 90D, but it's just like a step above the Canon 90D, but a step below the 1DX Mark II. So it's like in a perfect medium. You got your 4K 60, you got your full HD 120, you got your full frame sensor, you got your IBIS. The IBIS is really good for photos and you got your dual card slot so you can record raw on one and JPEG on the other, and yeah. I think it's totally pegged for photographers, but 
mostly for photographers doing like weddings or uh, smaller scale photography work instead of like billboards and stuff like that because with the lower megapixels you can't you're not really gonna be blowing up pictures and putting them on billboards or like covering walls and making murals so it is pegged for the photographer being that the video features aren't just drastically good and it does film in IPB but you do get 4k 10-bit 422 so yeah now the second question I have for you might be kind of mild i guess but how far can you push the colors in post you know obviously shooting raw it gives you the ability to manipulate the colors but i'm talking about how far can you push them until it's just kind of like you know like all right slow slow down like can you change multiple colors like you know what i'm saying just how far can you push those colors in post pushing the colors in post all right, so right now, obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and try to just drag these colors some type of way, like maybe this purple right here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to change that maybe to like green or yellow, I don't know. But for my experience, video is, it, it doesn't really work out all that well in post. If I try to change a whole color in video, at some point it starts to like crack and it just doesn't look good. It looks like, I don't even know what it looks like, but it's not good. Now photos, that's a different story. I can I can definitely adjust the photos, like the colors and everything, and that's fine. But with the R6, is it any different shooting raw if you try to completely just push those colors? I'm curious. Hmm, that's a good question. I don't do a whole lot of color grading. Um, I have tried the C-Log a couple of times, so let's see. This is C-Log footage. This is the LUT being applied. Um, this is uh, me adding a bit of saturation. Um, let's, let's bring the saturation down a little bit. Come on, bring it down, bring it down. Yeah, nope. Yep, yeah, right there, right there. Looks good. Oh, at least I hope so. Let me know. Third question, and this is more of a, I guess, more of a preference, but I'm just curious, why did you decide to get the R6 over the R5? When picking cameras, I was really interested in R6 because of the YouTubers I watched previously, they were talking about how I only filmed an IPB, and I thought, they don't have all eye. The EOS R had all eye, but the EOS R6 has only IPB, I say, the Canon 90D has IPB. So the only differences I really saw there were that it had IBIS and it had dual card slots. I was like, the Canon 90D is dope. So I really wanted to see the differences between the Canon 90D and the EOS R6. And I was actually pretty impressed with the EOS R6, but from a standpoint of paying money, if you just really don't want to spend $2,500 on the R6 and then spend a thousand to 22,500 on lenses just get the canon 90d it's just as viable you just don't get the ibis in a dual car slot question number three okay when does the footage start to look grainy after like boosting that iso i'm talking maybe you just like in a dark area you don't have any extra lights and you just gotta boost that iso up man like how far can you boost that ISO until it just looks like you just put a film grain on the thing? Like, cause I know the Canon EOS R, I mean, it, you know, it's, you know. Did, did they uh, fix that in the R6? Okay, so this one is the Canon EOS R6. I'm at 12,800 ISO. So this, using the EFS kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter on the EOS R6. So it's cropping in like it's an APS-C crop sensor, but have the shutter speed at one over 50, the aperture at 3.5, and the ISO at 25,600. Let's see if we can boost it a little higher. This is at 51,000. Yeah, okay, so now I'm only getting lit from my computer screen. And this is at 102,000. And this is 204,000. 
I hear that 12,800 ISO is almost like a native ISO because it looks it looks kind of grainy once you're kind of bumping it up to like 10,000, 11,000. But as soon as you hit that 12,800, it just like that grain level goes away, which was interesting. Question number four is how big are the file sizes in this camera? And do you have any issues editing in Premiere Pro or other editing software? All right, so this this one is a really good question because now when I previously filmed with the Canon 90D 4K with the 32 megapixel sensor, I was getting file sizes that were like one gig for 4K, one for like one minute of 4K. This one, it's only 20 megapixels, but sometimes it's just a little bit more gigabytes in the file size. But yeah, you get quite a bit of a file size for 4K 24 frames per second. And full HD 120 frames per second is probably about the same as 4K 24. So, yeah. All right. So this one, I feel like, you know, maybe a good handful of people want to know. Maybe they don't have a mic or maybe their microphone broke. But is the built-in audio on the R6 any better? You know, I know it's obviously still just built-in audio, but say maybe you forgot your mic. Would it be acceptable to basically record your audio on the R6? Is it any better with the built-in audio? Ooh, that's another good one. So built-in audio. So right now what you're hearing is the built-in audio. And I mean, as long as you don't have noise, like I normally have noise from the AC units, like right there, that one. As soon as that comes on, it's horrible. As long as you don't have ambient noise or echo, I think the built-in audio is pretty sufficient. But now this, what it sounds like with the Rode Video Micro on top of the camera. So these are the difference in the audio quality. So let me know what you can hear, what you can tell. I would actually prefer the audio out of the Rode Video Micro, but I totally used the built-in audio out of this camera as long as I didn't have any ambient noise or ambient echo. All right, and the last and final question is, how do you preview your CR3 files? I've uh, heard that when you try to preview the images straight out of camera from your SD card, it does not allow you to do so. So is there any workaround? Do you even have this issue? Is it still an issue? And um, yeah, those are my five questions, man. Thank you so much for considering me for this little uh, part of the video. And um, that's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, just to touch back on the original question as well, it is not, it's difficult to, like if you want to edit like on iPad or something, like the iPad Pro handles 4K really well. It handles the 4K out of this camera really well. But as soon as you record in C-Log, it's a no-go. You're not even going to be able to import the files into your timeline. But like raw files and stuff like that, they're fine. Um, I know Windows has like a CR3 or like a raw file reader where you can update Windows where it'll read your raw files in the regular picture app when you open your photos. Uh, and if you're on a Mac, it reads them just fine. So um, if people have had issues with the CR3, uh, those issues have probably been handled by now since they've come out. They've probably updated software and firmware and all that stuff. But yeah, I haven't had any issues with viewing CR3 files. Um, they view pretty fine. They're pretty beefy. They're not as beefy as the ones that come out of the Canon 90D though, but they're, they're still pretty beefy. I'm pretty sure the R5 is, <laughs> is probably gonna be more damaging to like, you know, edit than the R6. How good is the autofocus on the R6? Because you know, obviously on my R, it's pretty good, but occasionally, you know, if I am wearing a hat, it may go in and out. Or, you know, if I just move a little too fast, you know, sometimes it can, you know, try to do a little hunting. But how good is the autofocus on the R6? Can you kind of like run around, put your head in a circle, you know, maybe play like a game, make a star or something? Is it still going to track your face or, or does it struggle a little bit? 
These are things we gotta know, D Mogul. These are things we gotta know. Auto focus? Yeah. As soon as it catches my eye back, yeah, looks pretty good. And there goes the AC. So, but it does have a really good focus plane. So the box stays around my eye pretty well. As you can tell, I'm using the f2.8 aperture, so the background gets really blurry. I get really close. A finger length away from the lens, and look, looks great. How about this eye? Yeah, close the eye. Yep, it's focused on it. Ah. If I get this close, wow. That's that's awesome. I'm pretty close. Back up. Yep. Autofocus on this camera. It's pretty gangster. Now those are like the five main questions that I was curious about, but I do have like a bonus question for you. What is your favorite feature on the R6? Like, it could be something big or small, you know, just whatever it is. It could be, you know, the ISO, it could be the exposure, it could be anything. It could be the freaking weight of the thing, I don't know. But what's your favorite feature of the R6? Like, sell it to me. If I was like, dude, I really want to get this camera, like, what's your favorite feature? That's the kind of answer I'm looking for. You know, my favorite feature is a little bit people would say well that's not really a new feature and the feature would be the dual card slots but the thing about it is um, the Canon cameras I know of that had dual card slots usually had different types of memory cards this one has dual SD card slots now you can get you a couple of kind of sort of high-speed SD card slots you can kind of get you you know some SD cards that are like 100 megabits 170 150 um, decently fast you can record up to 4k 10-bit you can record 4k 10-bit 422 and you can shoot off some raw on one card and JPEG on the other and with the IBIS giving you that extra stabilization you know your photo game would be awesome and then you have the ability to pop two 128s in there or you can put a 128 in the one you're gonna shoot the raw on and then if you get a client and they want to bring their own SD card fresh out of the package you pop their SD card in there, you, they could have a 16 game. Like, okay, when this card's full, that's all the pictures you get. Or they have a 32. You have all the JPEGs going to that 32, that 16 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte or whatever. Hand it to them after you're done. You keep all the raws. But I just want to say thank you for everybody who pitched in on this idea to do a, kind of a little bit of a questionnaire from other YouTubers. So I reached out to quite a few people, two people were able to pitch in and they sent their submissions. Thanks to T Jolly. Thank you to Zoe Ricardo, uh, Mr. Ricardo. I'm not gonna keep trying to say that name. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I just can't say it very well. I'll let him say it. Zoe Ricardo. There we go. Thank you to him and thank you to T Jolly. And I appreciate all the people who've subscribed recently for coming by, hope to have more videos content around these topics as well as actually filmmaking stuff that I have planned for the future and uh, yeah this is pretty cool this is pretty fun um, hope we can do this next time guys and I appreciate you peace <laughs>